and welcome back to my channel. I have a very special guest today. I have my first ever guest, Adassa, who is playing Dolores in Encanto. Thank you so much for being here. I, I'm so excited to have you. I am so glad to be here. I'm excited. I'm a fan of your channel and I've been watching your content. You make everything so exciting. And when I got the role, well, when I got the call about a role for a person in a film, I went to your side and I was like, what a role in a person in a film? And there was just one thing that you said. And I was like, I think that might be me. I think that might be me. Oh, wow. <laughs> You're right. Oh, yeah. I did talk about Dolores in my um, video when they were talking about the casting. And it was you. I mean, that's it was. me. I cannot believe that happened, that you watched my video first. Like, that's nuts. <laughs> wow. I was excited because you were going to such depth and you have such a good, I mean, you're the original Dolores. I have to say, because oh. you go to the ground. You really do. Yeah. I try to gather as much information as I can from everywhere. Definitely. We all admire that. I think <laughs> even though I spoke to the directors, I was like, there's this girl, Sky. She knows everything <laughs> about everything. That's how I knew. And I told Byron Howard and Jared Bush, and I think one of them started following your content too, because I was like, you guys got to follow her. She's, she's something. She's a Disney lover for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Anyway, for the people that don't know a lot about your character, would you like to maybe tell them a little bit about your character, what you like about her, what her powers are? We all kind of know what she does, but in case anyone hasn't been watching any of these videos. <laughs> Well, Dolores has the superpower of hearing. Like she has a super hearing. She can hear a whisper. She can hear a pin drop and she knows everybody's juicy details. But she isn't like what they call in Latinos chismosa. Like she doesn't tell everybody. She won't say it unless you ask or if she hears somebody asking, she'll share. So she's pretty quiet and she has a very calm tone of voice. And even when she raps, she raps very whispery and everything's very intimate because noises and everything is so loud for her. But she knows so much. I think a lot of what happens, if they would have just asked her, could have been avoided, but then it wouldn't make Encanto what it is, so... It worked I'm out. I'm surprised people didn't like write things down in the movie. If I wanted to keep a secret from Dolores, I would be like writing all my secrets down and like holding up a sign to everyone. <laughs> exactly. Otherwise, yeah. she'll know. <laughs> oh, for sure. When I was listening to you on the soundtrack, you were amazing, by the way. I obviously noticed, like you said before, she speaks so quietly and like sings so quietly. Like how challenging was that? Because I personally don't have a volume switch. And if somebody was like, you need to sing at this level, I'd be like, oh no, how did you manage that? Because obviously you don't speak that way in your real life. <laughs> no, actually, there was a rap that I did. My husband is Don Candiani. He's produced for like Juanes and a lot of big acts and, and Luis Fonsi. And we did this song called Porque Ya No Yo. It's called, it says, uh, why her and not I. And we were in Miami and we shot this video in our hotel room. It was one shot and it was a very intimate rap, which I never really had explored that side of my voice because usually I'm like, Kind of like you are, you know, you're a stage performer. You got to reach that person, you yeah. know, six bro. Back. <laughs> and in this rap, I was like, Háblame claro, dime por qué acabó. Lo de nosotros fue más de una noche de simple pasión. So it was very intimate. And it was the first time that I had explored that sound. Mm -hmm. And we put it up on the YouTube channel. It did not get like a gazillion views or anything. Actually, it had very few views. But one of those views was Grace Kim, which was the casting director assistant, to Jamie Sparrow Roberts, which is the casting director for Frozen, Wreck-It Ralph, Tangled, May oh. I Go On, We'll Be Here All Day. She is the casting director and she was the one that got a hold of me through the YouTube channel. So that's why I told you, don't think about the numbers. Oh. It's the I, it's the who is watching that matters. That's amazing. And so I she was your rap and she was like, that's Dolores. She's the right person for this role. Oh, that's amazing. But I was like blind because I received the script. They were like, undisclosed character. We want you to try out for this. We want you to do, um, if you can do it. And we need it in 24 hours. So the good thing is oh. that we have a studio at home. <laughs> so we were like, got in the booth and we immediately did it. And then it went into spam, which we didn't know. Cause we were like, okay, we sent it. And we're like, just waiting. And we didn't want to be rude and be like, Hey, did you get it? You know, <laughs> but then the next morning and we didn't we hadn't heard back and I was like okay maybe we should write something and then so we wrote to Grace Kim and we're like hey did you get it and they were like 
no. And we're like, oh, oh no, check your spam folders, spam. And all of our emails went to spam for like the first three weeks with them. It was, it was the funniest oh, thing. That's but uh, yeah, weird. that's how it happened. Oh my gosh. So you just sent in that. And then did you have to do like a callback or anything like that? Yes, they gave me the call back after we sent in the initial, which they asked me to do a piece. And, and then they sent me a little tiny piece of the script. Mm. And then on the callback was when they said what the film was. They were like, it's in Canto and this would be the role of Dolores. Please don't disclose. Oh, we had to jump hoops because my husband's studio, uh, which is uh, for production music, had to get all of the securities and everything to record anything out past that initial phase so uh, once we went through all the hurdles that's when we met with Lin-Manuel Miranda and Yvette Marino which is the producer and Sharice Castro-Smith which is the first co-director ever and being Latina and a woman in a film alongside Jared Bush and Byron Howard so that was an incredible moment to be able to be with them. That's so good so when you got the call that you got the role like how did you react that you were going to play a Disney character? I would have freaked out. I'm sure you were uh, very excited. <laughs> I didn't think, honestly, Sky, I did not think I was going to get past the callback because this is a worldwide, amazing 60th Disney animation film. Come on. I mean, you know, you have so many amazing, talented Colombian artists to choose from. I just thought, I need to leave it all on the line. So I did not really talk about myself. As soon as I had them on the screen, I was like, can I tell you a little bit about my family? And I just started whipping out my family oh. pictures. This is my grandpa, this is my dad, this is my mom. And I started telling them that the dream of being a singer was my grandmother's dream. Then it was my mother's dream. And then it was my dream. And to oh. be in front of them and being able to say the names of my father and my mother and, and telling them the story. And I said, you know, you're not just influencing one generation this is three generations back of dreams come true and there's so many people that are going to be influenced by this film not just by the story you're telling by by the inclusion of the diversity within it that we all feel represented like you get a doll and you get a doll you know we all get a doll it's so beautiful to see that and after that i never thought i'd hear from them but i was just like dream come true i had a call back i saw the directors and i remember that moment it's in my mind forever and after that, I was feeling a little sick. So I went to the ER thinking I was pregnant. We have seven uh, kids. So I thought, here comes oh, wow. the <laughs> Yeah, so. <laughs> that's that's a, a lot big of commitment. You must be busy. <laughs> it is. It's a beautiful thing. It is crazy. It's awesome. I mean, Disney films in my house every day. That's like the basic. Okay. If Disney Plus is not girls. You've really got enough? Well, you've got more oh if you count. You've got like one more if you count like the six grandchildren line. Really? When my mom and dad come to visit, it literally is the madrigas. My mom's making arepas. My dad is making tacocho. Like that's what it is. So I went to the hospital to get tested. If maybe I was pregnant. And then things took a turn because I had had COVID back in January. Oh, and no. some um, I ended up not being able to speak or walk. Oh my at all I, I would get paralyzed just from eating so like many times my husband had to carry me out of the shower because I had gone through like a complete paralysis we didn't know where it was coming from we went to the hospital they ran ct scans and mris and everything and they just said you know there's a lot of unknowns with covid you're having you know long haul covid we don't understand where it's coming from you know you have some neurological issues we're just gonna have to keep track and there were things that they wanted to start picking and probing and I was like you know now I'm good let's just let life take its course and so I had to relearn how to walk and talk and do that double things at the same time like if it was walking and talking I would shut down and just like fall and during the times that I was regaining my strength we get the, the call that we got the part and I could barely speak oh. and I was like am I like honey maybe we need to tell them that you gotta pass and I was like you call them if I'm dead I'm showing up so yeah, the only thing I, I could muster up was like, thank you so much. When do I start? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. That's like so traumatic. Like, wow. Gosh, well, I'm glad you're okay now and you're speaking yes. you're here and you managed to live your dream of being a Disney character because that would have been awful if you couldn't have accepted that. 
Um, I was, yeah. I was floored because the last thing I remembered was the satisfied rap from Lin-Manuel Miranda, which was what I had to audition with, which was the, so, 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 so this is what it feels like to match fits. So I used it as a therapy to start regaining speaking until I got so strong that by the time it came time to record and be there with Lin-Manuel and be there with everybody, I just felt like a tiger. Like I seized the moment and I was so happy. And when we finished, my husband and I just embraced and we were crying because I was like, ah, we did that. <laughs> you were so amazing on the soundtrack though. I'm like, I'm so floored at like how amazing it was. Like we don't talk about Bruno is my favorite song in the oh. soundtrack so far. And like your moments are so cute. I love them. How was it like recording those songs? Like with Lynn Mama Miranda, obviously like intimidating, scary, et cetera. You know what? It's intimidating and scary because he is multi Grammy award, every award out there winning man. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully <laughs> he is, but he's so down to earth. Lin Manuel is the most genuine, laid back person you will ever meet. So all the grandeur of all his accolades, he kind of just like forget that. Let's just be friends and let's just do this. And he just had like his drink in his hands, and he was like, "All right, like give it to me." And then I just let it rip in one take, and he was like, "We're done." And I was like, yes. "But when I listened to the demo, it was like Lin Miranda on steroids because he had to do every part." So he was doing all the female parts, all the male parts. And so it was like Lin Miranda and Lin Manuel Miranda intertwining with Lin Manuel Miranda. You know, it was like Lin Manuel's choir. And it was so cool to learn from him what he was expecting, what he saw. And he also was so great at researching and knowing who we were as artists. Like when he wrote Dos Uruguitas that uh, Sebastian Yatra does, or when he wrote the parts for Jessica Darrow or Mirabel or even for myself as Dolores, he really took into consideration our talents and our abilities. And that's why we shine because he was amazing at writing something that we would shine in. And I'm just, I feel amazingly blessed and humbled that he chose me to be able to interpret one of his songs. Yeah, well, you definitely did an amazing job. I really, really loved it. Um, what was the other thing? Oh, one thing I noticed on social media is so many of the crew say that your character is their favorite character. Like, oh my so I'm noticing that it's like a pattern, like over and over again. They're like Dolores, Dolores, Dolores in so many reviews. If Disney called you tomorrow and they were like, hey, we want you to star in a Disney Plus series where Dolores <laughs> is the main character, would you say yes? And what would you call that series? I would call it... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Yesterday, I would be there, of course. If they did a spinoff, I would absolutely do it. Are you kidding? That's like the cherry on top of a dream because I, the, the film that did it for me was The Little Mermaid. That's the one that I was like, I want to be part of that world one day. One day, I want to be doing, I want to be where the people are. I want to I want to see them dancing. I want to make them dance. And to be part of that world, when we were at the carpet, which was the first time we had all been together, you know, since COVID, we have to record in separate studios and, and through to protocols. Oh, Our yeah. first was then. And so in, when we saw each other in Los Angeles, we just embraced one by one. Like I saw Lin Manuel, and, and when he was like, oh my gosh, you're real. I was like looking at him in his face and I was like, you're real. And then I went to Don Lake with him. I'm like, we are for real people <laughs> that exist. <laughs> We just embraced and Stephanie Patrice and I, we like embraced and her mom was there and Jessica Darrow and her mom and, and you know, Ravi was there with his parents. And it was like a family reunion of these people that I've shared emotional contact with for so long, but not a physical contact. And we were all crying. It was oh. beautiful. I watched a lot of clips in that premiere. You guys look so happy to be there. Like, we honestly, honestly. I forgot about them, like everybody taking pictures in the interviews. We just wanted to know. What are you doing? Like, oh my gosh, like you gotta come over to my house. <laughs> oh, that's so good. So good. Well, thank you so, so much for coming today. I really appreciate your time. And on behalf of like the Encanto fandom, we're like so excited when we get like messages from you, liking our tweets and videos and all that. So you really make our day. And thank you so much for engaging with all of us. It like means a lot to all of us. 
oh, you know what? I love your content. Please don't ever stop making it. There's so many people that you inspire. You inspire a Disney fan like me that got to live this amazing journey and you had the inside scoop and I'm so grateful for that. And I just want to tell everybody to go out there, support the movie. This movie is about family. It's about being able to feel that you're needed and wanted in a family. Sometimes you can feel a little bit invisible. And in this film, it goes to prove that it doesn't matter if you think you have a talent or a gift or not. We all actually do. And when we see that one among another and we see that we have strength in being together, that's where it lies. So go out there and see Colombia. Encanto. Hey, encanto. Hey, Your voice is incredible. Baby. <laughs> oh my gosh thank you thank you so much i cannot wait to see the movie i'm so so excited bye see you